All right, this time I would like to call the Harden County Board of Education meeting to order. And uh, first of all, I'd like for you to stand and uh, we'll recite the place of allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Board commitments. All you all know she's straight across. I can do across. that. I can do it. To improve our effectiveness, the Hardin County Board of, of Education commits to keep children first, listen, be prepared, be professional, demonstrate financial stewardship, represent the entire district and support district goals and support board decisions. Okay, thank you. And recognitions. John, you gonna take care of that? Yes, sir, Mr. I will. Uh, you have two resolutions, Mr. Chairman, in front of you, the leading the way uh, resolution, uh, leading the way awards, and for uh, several folks we'll recognize uh, during um, during uh, recognition time. So. Okay. I need a motion to approve. You wanted to approve both of them? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve both of these resolutions. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve both resolutions. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Chairman, you'll see, uh, if, you'll, if you've read, and I know you have the uh, Leading the Way uh, Award, um, the folks that earned that award this month, uh, you will really see that there are really three standout uh, people, organizations that, that, uh, that uh, we brought to the board meeting this month, three very deserving uh, folks. First is Miss Layla Simmons. Layla, are you here? Come on up, sweetheart. Layla is a student at Ronnieville Elementary School. Uh, when I asked Ms. Lucas who, who can, from Ronnieville er, has earned this award, and Layla came to the top very quick. She goes above and beyond in everything she does, Ms. Lucas said. She excels at all of her endeavors. She's a member of the Ronnieville fifth grade basketball team and participates in community sponsored events like ba uh, softball, basketball, and soccer. She also participates in both WizKids and Governor's Cup uh, quick recall teams. Layla placed first in Governor's Cup written composition for her district. She was also the winner of the 2018 Ronnieville Elementary Spelling Bee and represented her school very well at the district competition. She's an active member of Ronnieville Elementary uh, Junior Beta Club. She and her teammates earned first place in the Advertising Design Contest at the 2018 Junior Beta Convention in Lexington. She volunteers with many service projects at, at uh, Ronnieville and is a leader, a positive example, role model, and mentor to her peers each day at Ronnieville Elementary School. Thank you, Layla, for what you do for us. <laughs> And are Layla's uh, parents, are you guys here? Anybody from Layla? Okay, thank you for what you do. Thank you for helping her. Thank you. Next is Miss Allison Langley. Come on up, Miss Allison. <coughs> Allison uh, is a special education teacher, and you really would think you, she would work for the district because you see her at so many things, but she's at North Harden. She's a, a special education teacher and facilitator at North Harden High School. She's re responsible for the entire special education population at North Harden and is also the junior class sponsor, project graduation, co-coordinator, climate committee chair, and is a Hardin County Schools Technology Fellow. Allison works tirelessly to maintain and raise the school climate and culture among students and staff at North Hardin. She is never one to turn down an opportunity to help the school, whether it be spearheading food collection uh, for the passing of a student, providing appy hour, be careful how we say that, appy hour, that's with apps on your uh, devices, uh, professional development, training with staff, or coordinating food trucks for lunch, or reaching out to, to the community to strengthen partnerships with the school. Allison also gives her personal time to travel to, uh, to travel across the country to train other educators on the latest technology trends. She is the epitome of a team player and a true member of the Trojan Nation and Hardin County Schools community. Thank you, Allison. We appreciate it. As you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, we recognize a community member each month with the uh, Community uh, Leading the Way Award. And this month, we were asked, we asked Feeding America uh, to come, and Mr. Gary Miles, come on up. Just read a little bit about what Feeding America does. Feeding America, Kentucky's, second, Kentucky's heartland, provides essentials to the students of Hardin County Schools, and that essential is food. Food is gathered each week and brought to our Family Resource and Youth Service Centers to give to our students that take home food courtesy of the Backpack Program. 
Some students are dependent on the meals they eat at school. The breakfast and lunch they receive at school may be the only meals they receive all day. The weekend provides a gap that may bring a lack of food to a student or his home. Therefore, the food provided by Feeding America Kentucky's Heartland is critical to the livelihood of those students who participate in the backpack program. Feeding America Kentucky's Heartland also provides lots of volunteer opportunities for our students. Countless student groups and organizations from Hardin County Schools give hundreds of thousands of volunteer hours each year to Feeding America by sorting food, providing the help uh, the agency needs to succeed, etc. Hardin County Schools is grateful beyond words to those who make Feeding America Kentucky's Heartland an extremely, extremely important part of our communities. We appreciate you, Gary, and your team. Thank you. Chair Gary would like to talk to us a little bit about what Feeding America does. Thank you very much. If you don't mind going to the podium, oh, the here. folks yeah, back on. there would Chair appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much uh, for this recognition. Um, we love our backpack program, <laughs> and, and I know you all do too. Uh, we started it about 10 years ago uh, in partnership with uh, Hardin County Schools. It grew very rapidly here from about 50 kids to currently 650 kids on the program in Hardin County Schools but it also allowed us to pilot the program here and grow it out into our other counties. We currently have the Backpack Road program in 34 Kentucky counties and 5,000 kids on the program. So we're very proud of it. With respect to volunteering, uh, we couldn't do what we do without the volunteer groups that come out from Hardin County Schools. We had 5,000 hours uh, worked, uh, excuse me, 5,000 volunteers <coughs> came into our food bank last year to volunteer and just over a thousand of those volunteers were Hardin County school students for 2,400 hours that they worked out at Feeding America. So we appreciate all that and we could not do what we do without our great partnership with Hardin County Schools. So thank you very much thank for this you. recognition. Thank you. Very critical piece um, what Feeding America does uh, for the success of our students. All right, uh, now is our uh, recognitions. Uh, Ms. Uh, James T. Alton, 8th grader, Rachel, would you come on up, Rachel? Rachel is uh, very familiar with the Board of Education. She's been here a lot. She's one of Kentucky's, uh, this is why we're, she's back this time. She is one of Kentucky's <laughs> top two youth volunteers of 2018 uh, and uh, the 23rd Annual Pr Prudential Spirit of Community Awards. The Prudential Spirit of Community Awards, sponsored by Prudential Financial, in partnership with the National Association of Secondary School Principals, honors middle level and high school students nationwide for outstanding volunteer service. Rachel has earned this honor because of her dedication to and creation of Rachel's Fund for Everyone Park in Vine Grove. This park allows all children, especially those with special needs, to enjoy the fun of a community park. As one of Kentucky's honorees, Rachel will receive a thousand dollar reward award, an engraved silver <laughs> medallion, and an all expense paid trip to Washington DC in late April to join top youth volunteers from across the United States for several days of special recognition events. During the trip, 10 students will be named America's Top Youth Volunteers of 2018, and Rachel Ritchie, I know, will get that award, so congratulations. <laughs> we have a very similar award, this time to present to North Middle School seventh grader Sierra Hamilton. Where are you, Sierra? Come on up here, uh, Miss Sierra. Sierra Hamilton, a seventh grader at North Middle School, has earned the President's Volunteer Service Award. This award, recon Amer President of the United States, um, this award recognizes Americans of all ages who have volunteered significant amounts of their time to serve their communities and their country. It was granted again by the Prudential Spirit of Community Awards Program in partnership with the National Association of Secondary School Principals. And also, uh, Sierra has received uh, the certificate uh, from, uh, United, from the United States and also a signed letter from the President of the United States, Mr. Donald Trump. So congratulations, Ms. Sierra. We're very, very proud of you. Awesome job. <laughs> Ms. Ritchie, Ms. Ritchie uh, is there and, and uh, folks with uh, Sierra, you have uh, parents with you, Ms. Sierra? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and also, Mr. Gibbs. <laughs> Mr. Gibbs is very instrumental uh, in uh, in spurning the work. I'm sure that uh, Sierra has done. So, congratulations to uh, to those ladies. Now, we'd like to bring up the East Harden Middle School cheerleading team. Come on up, ladies. <clears throat> this is the East Harden Middle School cheerleading team. They finished second uh, in the state in the middle school small division 
at the at KPAWS cheer competition, which is the Kentucky Association of Prep Organization Sponsors Cheer Competition. Go on, circle around, ladies, so everybody can see your smiling faces. Why don't I let you guys uh, introduce yourselves? We'll start here and go to the end. Okay. Congratulations, ladies. Very, very and their parents, thank you for all your dedication. Coach uh, Angela Pearl is here as well. Thank you, Coach, and for uh, all the. This is, as you know, this is a very competitive sport, and uh, these ladies are the top two in the state. Can we get their coaches to come up with me? Yeah, Ms. Uh, Coach Pearl, you want to come on up with them, and so you can get a medal as well. And be in pictures. I'm sure that folks want to stand. You guys kind of want to get the, the shorter ones in the front of the car, he's in the back end. <laughs> we, may, we may be here a while later. Now take the photo. <laughs> all right, is everybody good? All right, congratulations, you all. Very well. Uh, next, we'd like to bring up some members of the West Harden Middle School Vextra Bikes team. Jonathan's here, Logan's here, are you, you, are you guys the only ones here? Okay, this is Jonathan Riley and Logan Thomas, but let me tell you what these guys did. Um, West Hard Middle School Vex Robotics teams competed in the 2018 Vex Robotics Kentucky State Championship. Team 4431A won the Robot Skills Challenge Championship. The four students that comprise 4431A currently hold the number one middle school ranking in Kentucky and are ranked number 26 in the world. This is the second consecutive year that a West Harden Vex team has won the Skills Challenge at the Kentucky Vex State Championship. Team 4431B finished second in the Skills Challenge Championship. So Jonathan is here from 4431A. Uh, also Nathan Crawford, Riley Rafe Snyder, Riley Robbins make up that team. And Logan is here from 4431B. Nick Lennon, Macy, Maycell, Murga, and Nathan Parrish are also on that team. And Coach da David Robbins is their coach. Congratulations, guys. Very, very proud of you all. Our Vex Robotics teams are so strong. We're they're winning state championships in middle school. So yeah. more to come in high school. <coughs> all right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank all the parents that brought them out again tonight. <laughs> Focus on uh, academics, and Mr. Sutton's going to take care of that for us. Well, I'm here to speak on the uh, National Beta Club organization tonight. Uh, those of you who know a lot about Beta. A lot of our schools here in the district, elementary, middle, and high, have those clubs in their school and it's a, it's a national club that uh, is for fourth through twelfth graders only uh, basically it focuses on academic achievement leadership character service back in October Bluegrass Middle School called me and said we want you to come over and be a judge for the students who are submitting projects for the uh, local level to compete at the state level in my 22 years I've never been a judge of a beta uh, you know competition with their local projects and I said sure I'll go over there so it should be take a few minutes I'll be honest with you, with the level of talent that I saw from our kids in the different project areas, all the way from photography to uh, the essay contest to recyclable art, uh, it, it was difficult. But I think the ones that we chose went on and did some great things. And uh, we want to recognize some of those students tonight. Uh, tonight with us, uh, first of all, we're going to start with this first student. I have a student, um, Lucas uh, Cohen. He's here with us tonight, and also Larry McKnight. Both these young men have been members of Beta since they were in fourth grade at New Highland Elementary School. They have carried that forward into Bluegrass Middle School. Uh, at last year's state Beta convention, Larry won first place and advanced uh, to the national convention for his speech. Uh, this year, Larry has submitted another speech for the convention. And uh, before we go over the recycle bar, come on, I have a seat with that recycle bar out there. We're going to let uh, Larry come on up and, and give his speech that he, uh, he submitted. So come on up here. Larry, why don't you go first? Good evening, board members. Good evening, guests. A true beta is mindful of decisions and their consequences. While we can all easily set and celebrate personal success, it's the consequences that guide our growth, friendships, and goals. Clearly, the world, the word consequence is generally seen in a negative light. As a preteen, many decisions are beyond my control. Nobody asked for my input on the arrival of my three brothers. Consequently, 
I have three friends for life. Nor was I consulted when we moved. I thought life would never be the same. It wasn't. It was better than I would have imagined. What I eat for dinner is what's put on the table. No question there. <laughs> Thank goodness I have some input on my clothes and shoes. The horrors of the, the horrors of the story my parents tell me of back in the day make me shudder. Since we were, since, since there are a few decisions I really get to make, I take one. I take each one seriously. The first decision I'm mindful of is the responsibility I have as a student. As a student, I'm expected to be in class, have supplies, pay attention, and pass classes. As a true beta, I am held to much higher standard. If I don't honor that standard, my immediate consequence is probation. However, holding up to the beta standard of excellence keeps me mindful of my grades and the effort that goes into making the grades. I sit in class and observe fellow students not paying attention, distracting others, socializing during instruction, and generally goofing off. I don't mind saying I don't mind saying that I am sometimes caught up in the moment and I laugh too. But when I think about the consequences of being off task, missing <coughs> instruction, missing deadlines, or not being true to myself, I am mindful that it takes a lot of self discipline and self motivation to avoid consequences. I am further reminded that a true beta is a leader in the classroom and in life. So as I grow older, I am learning that personal growth comes from making decisions like a true beta. Another decision I am mindful of is my squad. My squad is my circle of friends. My squad is my circle of friends. The way that I, the way that I choose to work toward continued success is by choosing friends that have similar goals and worth ethic. Worth ethic. I have, I've heard my Oma say, "Tell me who your friends are, and I will tell you who you are." For example, practice for games with my teammates is a time for my athletic squad and me to push up to push each other to get better, faster, and more, more motivated. If we were to practice and say, it's just practice, then we would play like an average team. But like a, beta, like a true beta, when one of us starts slacking off, we count on each other to remind us of our goals. The consequences of not, of not practicing with purpose can be poor outcome, injury, or our fans and coaches being frustrated. Instead, like my beta squad, we work we work hard, planning with purpose, and stay motivated and use potential consequences to guide us toward our best shot at meeting our goals. So far in life, I can honestly say that I have learned more from the consequences and from decisions than I have from my wins. Preteens are often asked about their goals. However, in beta, we visit our short-term goals regularly and we keep a keen eye on the future. Currently, my short-term goal is probably similar to most true beta students to have straight A's and help, the, uh, help in my community more. In my, in my journey to meet these goals, I have a few bumps in the road. For example, I have learned about deadlines. Missing, missing a recent deadline resulted in a zero. The zero temporarily dropped my grade to a B. To be mindful of deadlines in the future will keep me on track with my goal of earning straight A's. Helping more in my community will help me gain personal experiences I humble when I step outside of my comfort zone and volunteer to earn money for good causes. This year, I'm going to step away from car washes, bake sales, yard work, and working in parks to working in our new homeless shelter. I want to take a hard look at the decisions and consequences that make shelters a necessity. I'm grateful my family has made decisions that have protected me from the guilty, from the reality of the future of the life in the shelter. However, I will be an adult in six short years, and the tools to make decisions that will ensure my, me a successful future are learned through my current relationship with consequences. In conclusion, at True Beta, I am mindful of consequences for my decisions. Be self-motivated, self-disciplined, even when it's more fun to goof off. Practicing with purpose and always plan to win is a valuable lesson both on and off the field. Miss, miss a deadline, earn a zero. Never do that again or say goodbye to your straight A goal. Spend more time volunteering and let these opportunities teach you, teach you how to live life with consequences of shelters and personal blessings. Lastly, I have to honor myself as a vital member of my squad. I must decide to be a leader among leaders, a friend among friends. Being mindful of decisions and consequences of choosing a great squad is the easiest of my decisions to date. 
Personal growth, true friendships, and being focused on my goals are excellent examples of decisions and consequences for a true beta. As you can see, uh, that's why Larry was fifth in the nation last year with his speech, and he won again here at the local level this year to uh, proceed on. This guy right here, come on up. When I got to the uh, to score the projects, I immediately walked up and I thought, well, I could have went to Walmart and bought that. You know, I mean, uh, come on, who, who, who made this thing, you know? But actually, this was a, this is a recycle bar. Once I found out what he put into making this, I thought we have a future engineer on our hands. This guy can create with his hands. He can think outside the box. And that's what we want, we want our students to be able to do when it comes to academics. So I'm going to let him explain about what he created here and why he based I guess I didn't share this. Uh, he won first place, let's see, for his recyclable art and jewelry. Also won first place at this year's state convention. Lucas will be attending the national convention in Savannah, Georgia very soon. So uh, talking to him about your art there that you made, what this is made out of. Good evening. My name is Lucas Cowan from Bluegrass Middle School. This is a dog made from mop heads, like the mop heads. A uh, two-liter bottle, toilet paper rolls, newspaper, aluminum foil, felt, and pom-poms. We cut each individual, like, inch-long piece pieces from a mop head and glued them on individually. But before that, we built it all together. The legs are the toilet paper rolls, the two-liter bottle is the body, the aluminum foil is the tail, and then this, we kind of had to like maneuver around with the toilet paper rolls. And then after that, we paper mache two layers over it with newspaper and homemade glue. And then we put the mop over it. That's awesome. Mr. Moppins, it's huge. <laughs> Now that would be the perfect house dog. Does <laughs> <laughs> anybody else want to see it? I want to see it. We'll go ahead and bring up his other piece too. Um, this is actually probably my favorite. Let's go ahead and talk to you about what that is there. This is a men's bracelet. It has beta stamped on the side and the gears and the stamp in it to represent beta on my mind. And I made this because I like men's jewelry as you can see. And oh. I know someone that had like a bar where you can make leather uh -huh. bracelets. So I went there and we cut it to the perfect size fit and then we buffed it. Then we dyed it dark brown and then we stamped the stuff. Did you make the stand too or is that? This we just bought. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. That's beautiful. So as you can see, when we went through and had to judge these different uh, these, these different projects and different categories, I was glad that we chose some that went on to the state level. Now we're moving on to the national level as well. Uh, they made it difficult, yet they made it easy with their talents. So thank you all for allowing us to share that tonight. Very proud of our students here. Chris Gear, Crockett. Great job. I think he's ready to go to the shark tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Very good. We really have some talented kids in our school district. It, you know, it's, it's, uh, a lot of people say, what do y'all get out of school board? You don't make any money for it. Well, it's the good that you see out there is what counts. And it's, it, it adds up every day somewhere. All right, uh, we have a person signed up wants to speak to us, Jeffrey Carter, about archery, maybe. Yes, sir. Thank you for hearing me tonight, school board members. No problem. Um, my name is Jeff Carter. I am currently the head coach for the GC Burkhead Competitive Archery Team through the NAS program. Um, the reason I came to speak with you is uh, specifically to uh, possibly expand the elementary level of competition, specifically at GC Burkett Elementary. Um, this year, uh, it has been expressed that 
for coaching the that they are requiring uh, coaches to be school board employee or school system employees. Uh, currently, I'm a volunteer. I, in fact, my children are no longer in attendance at GC Burkhead. Um, my son now uh, attends at West Harden. He is a member of their archery team. Um, there, the additional requirement of uh, teaching 10 minimum hours of instruction which does not necessarily have to take place in uh, gym class because archery covers math, science, uh, as well as physical education. Um, and they require that to be taught by a certified instructor and also again, uh, the requirement is being asked that it be a school employee. Uh, I'm actually trying to investigate and in making a request uh, for a creation of such a position, uh, either unpaid as a classified position or a minimal paid, even as low as a dollar. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a volunteer and I enjoy it. Uh, so that the competitive team could continue. Uh, this year, uh, the Burkhead Archery team is ranked 40th in the state out of 174 elementary teams. Um, I'm understanding that there's uh, possibly two other elementary schools in our county that are wanting to start archery teams. Uh, they will most likely enter uh, the same obstacles of uh, the instructors needing or desired to be school board employees. Um, I've conversed uh, with Ms. Sharon a couple of emails in January trying to investigate uh, how to complete this process and that's what the reason I've, I've come to the board meeting tonight was to, to try and move this forward. Okay. Uh, so, Dan Morgan, do you think maybe you and Mr. Stiff could we can, uh, work the, on some solution? Or? And, uh, Chris Bauer is, uh, and Brian Lewis are our athletic. Uh, they uh, take care of the sporting parts of, for the school district for us. So if you don't mind, I'd like to give your information to them. Uh, thank you. And let you meet with them to discuss. I know the NAS, which is uh, uh, school programs uh, for archery, they have their list of rules and things. Thanks, um, and so we will get Mr. Lewis uh, to contact you or Mr. Bauer. Okay. I believe, um, Sadly, I'm trying to remember if their cars were in district today. So if it's not tomorrow, it'll be Monday. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Getting to be a sad situation when you cannot volunteer uh, <laughs> for some things. We, uh, that was in KSBA class <coughs> where I learned of, they talked about that a little bit in one of the classes in ethics. And, uh, and I still don't understand the whole part of it, but saying that people in a stipend position or whatever is has to be paid they can't volunteer correct and it, you know. I wonder why that is is it because of the supervision of students or it's the supervision of students and it honestly it's probably uh, for situations <coughs> of people recruiting coaches and then they get paid differently than a school system uh, pay system so sometimes the uh, bad decisions of a few affect many uh, mm. so I, but That's again we can have those uh, them yeah. to look into that yeah. so all right thank you. thank you okay construction updates and uh, john you want to touch base you wanted to remind you about some floor tile or something <coughs> you sent me a was we can talk about that if you like, but that, I, I was just going to touch base with you on that particular item, but if you'd okay. like me to share no. out on Cecilia Valley and John Harden, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, that's fine. I, I didn't know if you wanted to address the issue or something or everybody. We've, we've had a lot of construction problems throughout the years, and we're facing some again on uh, flooring and some small issues that keep popping up in the new construction of our schools. So John, is, he, he's he spent an excessive amount of time trying to uh, get those people to either finish or correct uh, 
little problems and I assume that that's the American way anymore. Everyone <laughs> wants to get the highest bid job they can get and do the cheapest work they can do. So uh, we're going to stand on top of that and uh, trying to get uh, the best job we can get for the money we're paying because I feel like we're paying a premium for a lot of our work. But uh, we, uh, we are continuing to... Uh, not into the San Jose, where we are too. Uh, we're continuing to look for sites for uh, a couple of new schools that we're <coughs> planning on building. And we're, when we bid these projects this time, we're going to put some pretty stiff language in there that contractors are on time uh, with uh, the proper product that they're bidding to use. When, and you know. Is something we get between an architect and an engineer and a construction person, and they say, "Well, you only had <coughs> five coats of polish. You should have had six, or you had five and you only needed four. So we'll, you know we get lost in those places. But we are actively uh, pursuing sites. We're looking at that every day, uh, working on it, and. Uh, Someday we're going to have a new East Harden and a new Lincoln Trail. Yes. <laughs> I saw hands in there. <laughs> Waving, I might add. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're... Who would have thought as big a county as Harden is that we'd have trouble finding land? <laughs> I know it. I, I, I just, <clears throat> I thought the same thing. I, I just almost expected somebody to come up and say, here, I'll give this track of land to you, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Not in Harden County anymore. All right, the uh, consent agenda. Anyone have anything they want to pull out of that or uh, talk about more? John's going to read that. John's going to read. Yeah, I got that on the next page. Uh, resolution supporting Kentucky public education, and that's that'll be in our consent agenda. Yes, sir. That's <clears throat> that's item four uh, e uh, five. And so, uh, if you will, I will, if you'll indulge me here, we'll read that, and so you all can approve it when you approve the consent agenda. Mr. Wright, just said yes. this is um, Kentucky Public Education Public Schools Week, and so um, this is Hardin County's way of um, showing support uh, of Kentucky Public Schools and advocating for the great things that are happening daily uh, for our students in the classroom. So. Uh, just by being here tonight, I'm sure you've seen the variety of things and the dedication of the folks with our Leading, Away, Leading the Way Awards and the different things with the VEX Robotics and the Cheerleading and the Beta Club. So there are a lot of great things happening. So that resolution is what we're asking Mr. Wright to read. Yes, ma'am. This is a resolution by the Hardin County Board of Education, as you said, Ms. Morgan, in support of Kentucky Public Education. Whereas the board holds the sacred value of public education and possesses a unique perspective on its power to shape and change the future for children and families, and whereas we join our counterparts across the state with one voice to call for recognition that Kentucky public schools are vitally important and worthy of support, celebration, and appreciation, and whereas our public school students continue to demonstrate remarkable progress, including graduation rates among the top ten in the nation, improved college and career readiness, and increases in academic performance resulting from the application of research-supported instructional practices delivered by high-quality teachers despite ongoing efforts to cast public schools as inferior. And whereas investing in public education is the most impactful way to ensure economic growth as it's critical in the globalized econo economy, <coughs> students are prepared to adapt to change in the workplace. And whereas a robust investment in education is necessary to equip schools with the resources, personnel, facilities, and technology to ensure that all Kentucky children acquire the skills and knowledge needed for college, career, and life successes in the 21st century. And whereas a robust investment in education will continue to close, close the equity cap, uh, which will decrease the divide between the educated and uneducated, uh, wealthy and poor, and the strong and the weak. And whereas the existence of a strong system of free public education for all Kentucky children is essential to our democratic system of government. And whereas preparing children to participate in our democracy embraces the notion that in order to survive as a nation, our citizens must be committed to the ideals and work of a democracy and be able to find common ground with each other 
and respect where common ground is absent. And whereas Kentucky Public Schools provides students with broad-based educational opportunities, holding exposure to the history, culture, languages, and context of all regions of the, of the world, learning how to collaboratively solve problems <coughs> and interact with people of diverse cultures, and developing empathy for human differences, commonalities, <coughs> and backgrounds. Now for, therefore, be it resolved by the Hardin County Board of Education that the board calls on our state legislatures to prioritize full financial support for the Commonwealth's public schools and to honor promised benefits critical to those who commit their professional and personal lives to our schools and to our students. And the board strongly advocates for state policy committed to fully supporting and educating the whole child, providing adequate financial investment in academic and non-academic support, including counseling, extra and co-curricular activities, student safety and social and emotional supports, and to empower local education leaders to implement, manage, and lead school districts accountable to local citizens. And the board supports an inclusive, safe, and innovative public education system that ensures all of our students can succeed, regardless of their zip code, the color of their skin, their native language, their family status, or their social standing, while promoting equity and excellence. The board urges our state legislatures and our governor to meet their constitutional and moral responsibility to properly fund our public schools and support the children who depend on public education to prepare them to be happy, healthy, <coughs> successful, and productive citizens of our commonwealth and a nation. The board supports Love, Love Kentucky Public Education campaign of the Kentucky Association of School Administrators Superintendents of the Year in order to proclaim the good news of public education and to encourage citizens of every community to openly and strongly support our students, teachers, families, leaders, and employees every day in school. Adopted this 15th day of May, 2018. All right, thank you, John. We will, uh, when we prove the consent agenda, I'm sure we'll <coughs> prove that. Well said. Is there anything else anyone wants to? Uh, I think up? most everything else is kind of routine stuff, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. I'd make a motion that we uh, approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. <coughs> have a motion and a second uh, to approve the consent agenda. And uh, that uh, everything is about the same. Uh, we're approved a special carrier for the John Harden boys who uh, had a very long, hard run last night. I got in about 1 o'clock from that game this morning, but. <laughs> they uh, played their hearts out in uh, three overtimes, so we're still proud of them. You know, there's going to be uh, there's going to be 15 losers <coughs> in that tournament up there, and uh, it, sometimes uh, <coughs> they learn more from a loss than they do from the win. So uh, they took it well, and we're proud of them. <coughs> All right. Uh, There's no other discussion about anything. Have a motion. All in favor of uh, approval of the consent agenda, second pop saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And uh, we don't have anything on action items <coughs> tonight. Uh, new business, uh, it's not on the agenda or anything, but Mike Kenny. I guess several of you see that Mike's not here tonight uh, between the last meeting and this one. Uh, he decided to uh, resign and uh, he has a uh, son that wanted to <coughs> teach and work in uh, our district and that's uh, considered by Kentucky Department of Education to be a conflict of interest. So <laughs> Mike uh, chose to step aside and uh, let Andrew try his luck and hard out at teaching in Hardin County Schools. So uh, we're glad for Andrew and it's a loss for us for Mike. He's not going to be with us to finish out the rest of the year. So we will make it. Uh, talk to him a while ago. As a matter of fact, he was down at my house and uh, I'm sure I'm going to get his uh, comments because Mike don't stand back on telling you what he thinks and, and I'm <laughs> glad to hear it. Uh, I was joking with him. I said we was going to move the East Hardin School up on the north side of E-Town. And I didn't think he was going to leave in time for me to make it to the meeting. <laughs> so uh, we well, I, appreciate the job that Mike done for us. Yes. I'd just like to add that I served with Mike for his entire tenure. And uh, 
he was a good board member yes. and we will miss him. Yep. He, he, uh, he took things seriously. He, uh, he was a pretty hard advocate for the south side of the county now. He liked to, uh, he, he, he said once a rebel, always a rebel. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, superintendent's report. Yes, um, just also want to thank Mr. Kenny, uh, and that's what you want in a board member. You want someone who uh, goes with what they believe in and doesn't uh, change that based on uh, popular opinion, but actually what's in the best interest of the community and students he represents. So he did that. Uh, just want to let those um, folks out there know we are always conscientious about the money that we spend uh, and this week we were um, due to a program that we're part of we received a payment of six thousand uh, dollars from Nolan RECC and this is part of their retrofit rebate program so we've changed out some old lighting uh, to newer lighting and it is actually uh, cheaper to run and amazingly it uh, has a better effect on our classrooms with lighting um, so uh, we really appreciate that and the community uh, work that was done there and our buildings and grounds we are blessed to have the folks with the technical ability to change out these lights and so that saves us a great deal of money as well so uh, really appreciate uh, that savings to Hardin County School and to the taxpayers um, we recognize the VEX Robotics Program from West Harden, but we have five high school teams that will compete in Worlds this year. Um, so two from uh, North, two from Central, and one from John. And then we also have West Harden who will be participating at Worlds. And if you get a chance to go to this, I highly recommend it. The second team uh, is not a school team, but it is comprised of uh, two young ladies who attend East Harden Middle School, the Glendale Tech. So they will also be going to Worlds. Uh, so just like to see more girls involved in this program. Yes, uh, and we're working uh, toward that. I think when you see some of the teams, you'll be <laughs> impressed with that. Um, so also this past weekend, I had the um, opportunity uh, to be at a really great event at North Harden High School. It's Sergeant Major Gray's uh, Invitational Tournament for JROTC. This is an all-day event. There's the physical activities, there is the target shooting, um, there is drill, uh, there is academic competition, but there were about, I think, 3,000, is that right, Ms. Corder? 65 schools from five states. 65 schools from oh five states gosh. and with over 3,000 students involved at the different locations. So several of our students were recognized. Uh, so it was just, I was able to pass out the academic award. Uh, but some of those students recognized their, uh, five of them received and they were not aware that they were going to receive this, but four year full paid scholarships wow. to different colleges around the United States. So. Uh, next month, our uh, focus on academics will be our JROTC program. So we've asked some of our students who belong to that program to come in and speak, but also those who have earned scholarships from other universities uh, for that. So uh, just, it was a really, really neat uh, activity. Um, so also on academics, uh, one of the things um, in the News Enterprise when I met with Catherine last year, we talked about really focusing on our reading, writing, and math and sort of going back to the basics. And I've had the opportunity uh, to drop in every school in the month of January and again in the month of February just to go in and see what's happening in the schools and the amount of reading and writing that our students are doing. Our schools um, are meeting with the students individually, coaching with them, setting goals, and then also meeting with them individually on the writing that they're doing. And so a lot of great work happening there. I see a lot of the teachers out here and principals going, yes, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, but I know the students love that one-on-one -on -one attention uh, that they're getting. So our instructional service department is clicking on all cylinders. Is that right? Um, and then finally, I know that um, school safety is an area of concern for all of our parents out there. Um, and trust me when I say we share um, in your concerns about school safety. One thing um, I want to let people know is that we are continually meeting with our first responders, our police officers, our fire departments, um, 
and those people to make sure they know how to come into our buildings. Um, we also have police officers who are watching social media accounts and we have had multiple uh, communication uh, with our police departments, uh, things they find on social media. So parents, I will, um, I won't even stop short of begging you to be a part of your child's social media accounts. Uh, you need to be observant. It can be very life-changing for your student uh, just to make a very um, random decision uh, without much thought. And if you are there to help guide them and are aware of what they're doing with social media, uh, it will make a huge impact for your students so that we, we ask that you be a part of that. Uh, but again, for the parents who are heavily involved, please know that the school, we are doing our part. Uh, we are meeting with these folks to make sure we have all the safety uh, provisions in place. Uh, we practice this with our students and we will continue to do that. So um, we want you to feel good about dropping your kids off or putting them on a school bus and know that they're going to be well taken care of and receive a great education every day in Hardin County Schools. And with that, Chairman, that's it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Preston is with us tonight. He's. Uh, representing Farm Bureau and uh, he, he's been here several nights and attending and we're all always, always glad to have the uh, major people. Yeah, just, just wanted to say that uh, Farm Bureau strongly supports public education. That's one of our main resolutions and part of my reason for being here is seeing what's going on and to, uh, to bring that message that uh, public education is very important. And so we strongly support that. So I, and I was impressed with the, especially the uh, robot thing. You know, maybe maybe I won't have to drive a tractor anymore. Who's you know, driving those tractors? So, so we'll see. We don't know who the next That's right. the next superstar is going to be. The next Bill Gates might be right in here. Right here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. And Mr. Preston, if you don't mind, Farm Bureau uh, donated uh, multiple. Uh, kits to our elementary schools to be able to teach science and agriculture um, and one of the things that um, our aerospace and engineering is uh, working with is um, quadcopters um, and the amount of technology they use in the farming communities uh, with those going over the farms to find out where they need more water, where they need fertilizer, where they don't need as much fertilizer. There's just a really in, uh, interesting uh, studies with that. And we enjoy, uh, we have a group of uh, our young farmers are going to be putting on a technology demonstration at Lakewood here in another week or so and they're going to have, well, they're going to bring their drone, but it turns out they can't fly because, <laughs> anyway, but they're going to bring it. So uh, maybe you guys ought to loosen up your rules a little bit. I'm going to suggest you. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, agriculture, technology is really important. Right. And in order for us to continue to feed the world, we're going to have to have a new generation of people that can, can perform this technology. So. Absolutely. It starts right here in the schools, and yes. so that's what we have to, we have to concentrate on our STEM efforts. Yes. Appreciate it. We've got two young ladies on the front row. Are y'all representing someone just here? These are uh, Western Kentucky University students, and they are doing student teaching, and part of their oh. um, classes is a requirement to attend a board meeting. They're uh, <laughs> doing their boring part of their class, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. Uh, <coughs> we don't need an executive session. Not. And uh, board calendar, April 2nd through the 6th, school's dismissed for spring break. It's going to be cold and maybe snowy that week. Uh, no, that's not on there. <laughs> and, uh, April the 5th through the 6th, uh, all offices closed to KEA and graduation graduation is getting close yes and those dates can be found on the <coughs> uh, Hardin County Schools website if you would like to find out which high school and what time their graduation will be so you can begin about planning for that in about 10 minutes once it is passed okay 
Mr. Chairman, you're about five minutes over time. You can make it home in five minutes. There's going Kentucky to be something play. real important happen at 710 that I'm interested in. So I make, make a motion to adjourn. I second that. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.